The MAC in MAC address stands for Media Access Control. And if you recall from our video on the OSI model, that sits right there at layer two of the OSI model. When we talk about the MAC address, we are really referring to a physical address of a network card. When that network card was manufactured, the manufacturer stamped a unique address on that particular piece of hardware. And the unique part is very important. Every single MAC address in your environment needs to be different. And certainly on the single subnet needs to be different. And manufacturers go to great lengths to make sure that they do not duplicate any of these MAC addresses during the production process of these adapter cards. We usually refer to a MAC address as something called an extended unique identifier. We used to call a MAX or MAC 48s because there are 48 bits in a typical Ethernet MAC address. But the IEEE has trademarked a new term that they like to use and prefer everybody uses called EUI 48. That EUI, again, standard for extended unique identifier. There's also a type of MAC address or an EUI that's called an EUI 64, where there are 64 bits inside of that hardware address. Sometimes you'll see these broken out, and people will refer to a MAC address as a hardware address. And they'll refer to the EUI as other devices or some software that's using an address like that. If you were to look, though, at a MAC 48 and an EUI 48, they look exactly the same. They come from exactly the same lists of things at the IEEE. When we start, start talking about something like an EUI 64, we usually use that in IPv6 and FireWire. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Normally, we use whatever MAC address may have been burned into an adapter card at the time of production. Whatever the manufacturer set it to, that's what we're going to use. But in many cases, when the driver allows us to do this, we can change the MAC address to be whatever we would like it to be. We can type in any set of numbers we would like, and that would be the new MAC address of that computer. Obviously, there's a bit of management associated with that. There's things you have to type in and things to do to make that happen. But there are certain occasions when you're using certain routing systems or certain configurations that require a certain computer to have a certain MAC address where you might want to set that manually. So whenever you look at a MAC address, know that it's certainly something that is automatically put there by the manufacturer, but it's one that could be assigned locally by someone else. Whenever you see the term EUI 48, we're talking about what we traditionally think of as the MAC address of an Ethernet computer. And the EUI 48 is six bytes long. We usually display it on our screens. You'll see it written on your computer in hexadecimal format. The first three bytes of the MAC address are assigned by the IEEE. In fact, if you look at certain uh, applications, they'll even take the name of who those three bytes were assigned to and replace it as part of the MAC address. I'll show you an example of that in just a moment. We call those first three bytes the organizationally unique identifier. And that OUI is something you can go out to the internet, you can search for these OUIs, and it will tell you the first three bytes and how they've been assigned for those particular manufacturers. The last three bytes that are left over then are assigned generally in a sequential format so that they are all very unique. It's very rare to find duplications. I've seen them once in my entire IT career, which was a mistake from the manufacturer when they burned in the addresses for those cards. Here's some examples of some EUI 48s. You can see this is an example where the first three bytes were replaced with the name of the manufacturer of that particular adapter card. In this case, it was a Dell. And then it showed the last three bytes of that MAC address 6F06F2. And notice we're separating those with colons in between. If we were to write it out all the way, 002170, those were the three bytes assigned to Dell. And then, of course, the 6F06F2. You may also see MAC addresses written out with dashes in between. Here's a good example of that same MAC address with those dashes put instead of a colon. Any one of those is appropriate to use. And at the end, you'll be looking at them on a screen. And you'll know very easily that that is the MAC address just because of the format that's being used to write it out. If you were to open up a window on your Windows computer and type ipconfig slash all and pipe it to more, you would then get a list of not only the IP addresses and the type of adapter cards you were using in your computer, but you would also be able to see what the MAC address was. In fact, the physical address is 0021706F06F2. So you can see there your MAC address is written out completely right there. And it's got dashes in between to be able to, to see that. You can also see 
a link local IPv6 address. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. Notice that's a little bit larger than that 48-bit MAC address that's listed here. But it's one that comes in very handy for us if we want IPv6 to automatically create some link local addresses for us. When IPv6 is creating those addresses automatically, it's using an EUI 64. It's a 64-bit address. It's appending some, some additional bytes onto the beginning of it. But essentially, it uses our MAC address as the link local IP address on our computer. If you were to look at the addresses that FireWire uses to communicate, it also uses EUI 64 addresses. These are 8 bytes long. These are 64 bits in length. And again, we're showing them as hexadecimal on our screen. The first three bytes, again, the same as the EUI 48, are the manufacturer of that particular device. And then the last bytes that are there are going to be, in this case, five additional bytes that are there are going to be assigned sequentially in order so that we have unique addresses on the network. And if we were to look at these, we would see addresses that look something like this, where you now have more than those 48 bits. We have 64 bits, or eight individual bytes represented in hexadecimal that we would see on our screen. So whether you're looking at an EUI 48 or an EUI 64, they're relatively easy to recognize on your screen. And at this point, you should be able to pick one out, recognize that that's a MAC address, and immediately tell if it's an EUI 48 or an EUI 64.